it. Now that, that is actually your trademark. People are always amazed. And the one thing I hear most about, other than the fact that either from somebody who's not an art connoisseur, it's real pretty, yeah. or to an art connoisseur, you know, it's a fine composition, whatever, is I cannot believe the level of detail in every leaf. You will actually paint leaf by leaf. Yes. Uh, you don't see it many artists and, doing and that, leaf by leaf. Uh, and yeah. that same leaf several times because there are several layers of light. Well, if it's a variegated ficus, which is an inside joke <laughs> with us, you will actually variegate the ficus on each leaf. Fortunately, my trees are not botanically correct. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I probably would not have a variegated fi ficus in it. But uh, I want to also say that I've recently joined a, a group of miniaturists called the Hilliard Society of Miniaturists. And it's a specialized skill, so we should mention there are It is a specialized artists. skill, and I, I used to belong to the Miniature Art Society of South Florida. And that, these are umbrella groups that um, focus only on miniature painting, and they have artists represented from around the world. And in their shows that they have once a year, or maybe a couple of times a year, uh, they really keep the format of miniature painting within a five, five inch by seven inch format framed. So these are paintings that are the size of a postage stamp and then they are framed and end up being no more than five by seven inches. And collectors fly in to wherever the show is at from around the world because miniature painting is a, is a unique niche, a unique uh, style of painting that and it's a real collector's item. Well, we, I should mention miniature painting, of course, had its heyday in the Victorian era. And, and since then, it's actually become probably less and less of, of a style practice because it is so difficult. It's hard to pump out a lot of miniatures. So wh wh why do you even bother? I mean, do you feel drawn to the fact that it's the challenge of, of the novelty of being able to do it? There's a that? challenge. It's just a scale that I feel comfortable with. And I really, you know, think that it, happ it just happened to me that that, was, that became my signature over the years. When I was working at the airport and I would take tourists out on, on scenic trips around Trinidad and Tobago. I would go with just a small canvas and I would sit down and paint on site and they would say, you know, can I buy that from you or whatever. Mm. And I would have a friend who was a woodworker make little easels and display them on easels. And that's really where they first began. And then my mother's friend was Carlyle Chang mm -hmm. and he was One very of the important. artists in this country, yeah. Yeah. And he, my mother and him worked in theater and uh, in the arts and so on. And he was the then president of the Trinidad Art Society. And they were having something called the, the Art Buyers Fair, which was down at the old Teachers Training College. And he said, Peter, you know, you, you should really take a booth, which was just basically two sheets of fly, butterflied open, and display your paintings and see what happens. And so I had some of my little paintings and, you know, very typical of, of my style from then till now is to have a little colorful house with a galvanized mm. roof with greenery around it. And I was sitting down there with my paintings and easels and demonstrating how I was painting them. And there were literally a ring of people around me waiting to buy that. And that was really the first sort of... So you realized there was a demand. It wasn't just to satisfy yourself. But there was that interest that people w were appreciating my work from that, from that time. Now, you mentioned the fact that your trademark has often been uh, an old time house uh, and, a, and an imaginary landscape, of, a very lush imaginary landscape. Yeah. You've been criticized for that by some people who say, well, you know, he's painting the same thing over and over again, when they don't realize that, in fact, since it's coming out of your mind, it's not yeah. like you're standing there and doing a photographic portrayal of something. My passion is not changing over the years. I'm painting from something that's very much inside of me. And if this is something that I am passionate about, uh, it's something that I would continue to produce. Uh, I still see little old houses when I drive around. I've driven with you and seen you taking pictures yes, of little old houses to remember them. To a point where my friends even say, Oh, look at that. That is a shepherd painting. We, we all describe it as a shepherd house. Yeah. <laughs> and when you see a, a woman walking down with a brightly colored umbrella, you say that that is a shepherd woman. Right. And when you're driving to Maracas on the North Coast and there's a vine hanging down in the road, that is a shepherd vine. Well, that, that marks your success, doesn't it? The fact that you, you have trademarked something to the point where the actual thing <laughs> gets your name on it. So that's, that's kind of interesting. And, and so I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I have established a signature style both in the, the size of the work and of the work itself, and that I can paint from my imagination. No, you, you've obviously taken uh, workshops with other artists. You've been to uh, art courses around the world sometimes. Uh, you've tried different styles I've seen over the years. I, I mean, you've, you've done, you started with your monochrome series, and that's still quite popular. Um, you, you've I tried different styles, but people not, don't necessarily, they want to see the 
Shepard trademark, which must be a little frustrating for you as an artist because you're trying something different. Not really, because I think I still inject my, my style in what I do a little bit. Um, uh, we talk about the different palettes, the monochromatic mm -hmm. works. Uh, I'm also inspired by the two seasons that we have. We have the rainy season and everything is lush and beautiful. So there's a lot of green in my work. And then to the other extreme, uh, my most popular palette is my works in sepia, shades of brown or earth tones, uh, originally inspired by the dry season. Mm -hmm. In fact, one year I had an entire exhibition entitled uh, Dry Season. All the paintings were in shades of brown. And to this day, that remains my most popular style uh, uh, palette for my work when people see these works in, in shades of brown. Now, it evokes us a warmth in the room when they see it. And I don't know, it also looks like something that is antique mm -hmm. because of the shades. So people then refer to it as, as some old artists that we have, uh, you know, have graced our, our knowledge base of artists that we have had over the years. People say that the brown ones remind them of Casabon. And he painted the landscape that, that, that he saw before him. And that was his passion. And this is my passion. And even though it may seem as though I am painting another river that's bent around a corner with bamboo, that is what I am passionate about. But, but also, had it been simply that, people could not look at your work year after year after year, the same work, and find something new each time. They will find something new each time right. because I'm... Which is why it is successful. And exactly. So when people criticize you, they're missing the point that there is something more to it than what, what they think is there. And, and I hope that in this current exhibition that people come, and I have a few of my, you know, the variations in my style represented here, because something else that I do is I have engaged the membership of the Earth Society of Trinidad and Tobago to go out on field trips with me. Uh, we set up a, a destination once a month let's say, and I publish it on the Earth Society's website where we would go. This is your plein air um, This series. is the uh, painting our plein air, which means yeah. basically painting out in the open. And I have always painted in my studio. So for me, this is an exercise for me, and it's also to encourage all kinds of artists to come that are members of the Earth Society. They could be students, they could be emerging artists, they could be hobbyists, or they could be professional artists. But the point is to come together uh, you know, just to share ideas and to go out on location to places that, that I like mm -hmm. and, and paint what we see. Now, the essence of painting out on location is to really feel the environment in which we are sitting around us. I'm not saying to you paint exactly where that coconut tree or that boat is, but to get a sense of the atmosphere around you and, and paint from that. And so I've been doing it now with the Earth Society for about two years. Um, we have a wide range of people that, that come out. Maybe the groups are as little as five people at a time or as many as 18. Um, but it's something that every month, if you check the Art Society's website, it, there's always an event posted for the next one. So people that are interested can always refer to that and join us. OK, well, but Shepard, we're out of time. Uh, you're the only person I know who all their friends refer to by his last name, yeah, well, which is Shepard. Mm -hmm. uh, we're out of time, but for people who want to see the work of In My Little World, uh, which is at the 101 Art Gallery, uh, where can they, uh, what are the days and times? The 101 Art Gallery is housed in the Art Society's headquarters. That is at the corner of Jamaica Boulevard and St. Vincent Avenue in Federation Park. Uh, and it's open Tuesday to Friday from 10 until 4.30 p.m. On Saturdays, this Saturday I'll actually be there all day from 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. And they're closed on Sundays and Mondays. Okay, but you, you still got five good days to see the work. Yes, and then the show ends on the 19th of November. So anytime between now and then, uh, they can visit the 101 Art Gallery. Peter Shepard, a pleasure having you on the program. And, and the good thing is I get to talk to you afterwards as well. Yes, thank you very much, Verdi. Thank you, very, and congratulations on your new show. Absolutely, thank you. You've been viewing One on One. Join us again tomorrow for another edition.